everyone. Today we are looking at the very short Old Testament book called Habakkuk or Habakkuk, however you want to pronounce it, just whatever you say, say it with confidence. Uh, Habakkuk um, is a unique Hebrew word. It actually uh, is translated as the, uh, the word embrace, to embrace, which um, actually uh, heightens kind of the sense of what this book is all about. Uh, you can read the book of Habakkuk in about five minutes. Um, it's only three chapters. And what this book is about is essentially it's a dialogue between Habakkuk, the prophet, and God. Um, and there's kind of three sections where Habakkuk speaks, God responds, and then there's a final kind of concluding section in chapter three. Um, and Habakkuk actually is asking some very relevant questions that perhaps you and I might also ask God. And so Habakkuk is looking around. Um, he is looking at the sad state of affairs of, of God's people. And um, he's saying, God, why do you uh, not show up to punish uh, you know, injustice? Why do you tolerate wickedness? And then God says something rather extraordinary. He says, um, this verse that we often use as a uh, you know, people use it as their life verse, but then they don't kind of read the next verse, which is chapter one, verse five, where God says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if you were told. Um, we use this verse, I've heard this verse before about, yeah, the amazingness of what God can is, and is going to do, um, something that's beyond our belief. But if you look at the next verse, what is it that God's going to do? Verse six. I am raising up the Babylonians, that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwellings not of their own. And then God goes on to say, basically, I'm going to use these people uh, and these people are going to come in to your land and they're going to uh, take um, the people, God's people, into exile. So that's kind of an interesting thing, right? I'm going to do something that you would not even believe I'm going to raise up an even worse people, and they're going to execute my judgment on you for your wicked behavior. Which leads uh, Hab um, Habakkuk uh, to another kind of question. After hearing this response from God, he says, God, I know you, you say that you're good. Um, I've seen how you've worked in the past, but really, God? Like, why would you tolerate people who are even more wicked than us and use them to do your purposes? That makes no sense. And then he says, God, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to wait for you to reply. It's great. I love this dialogue. And then God does reply. Um, and he kind of gives five responses. And he says, well, Habakkuk, here is why uh, I'm using the Babylonians to come and execute my judgments on my people. He says, um, look at the land. The wealthy are extorting people. He says, people are building their own security on unjust gain. He says, people are profiting through bloodshed and crime. Uh, people are getting others drunk in order to take advantage of them. And then people are worshiping false idols. So he gives this picture about how everybody has gone astray, that there's just, uh, the land is rampant with uh, un, you know, injustice and crime and bloodshed. And, and people oppressing and taking advantage of others. And he's like, is this what my people are supposed to look like? No. And so in order to get them back on track, first I'm going to use uh, these people and to come in and bring my judgment and justice so that this will be a wake-up call for my people. And then uh, we get finally in the final chapter, chapter 3, uh, Habakkuk's, Habakkuk's response to all of this. Um, and his response is really poetic, and it's really amazing. Um, he basically says, God, I know who you are. I've seen how you work. And then he goes on to describe this long list of how powerful and immense and holy that God is, that no one can stand before him, that God does whatever he wants, that he alone is God, and whatever he decides, it will happen. And then the kind of concluding verses are just this really beautiful picture. Uh, he says in verse 16, I heard what you're going to do, and my heart pounded, my lips quivered at the sound, decay crept into my bones, my legs trembled, yet I will wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. 
he basically says, God, uh, I know what you are about to do, and I don't like it, but okay. And then he goes on to say, verse 17, this is very famous and really beautiful and poetic. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet will I rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of the deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. He basically says, God, I don't really understand uh, why you're doing this, why you're ju judging your own people with uh, people who are even more wicked than us and bringing judgment and exile on us. But I, I don't really understand how you're working this way. However, I will make the choice to continue to trust in you. Why? Well, because I know who you've been in the past. I've seen how you've worked in the past. I know your goodness and your holiness and your power. And because of that, I will continue to trust in you. It's this really amazing picture of saying, God, I don't know where you are and I don't know why you're operating this way, but I, I do, I've seen how you've worked in my life in the past. I've seen your goodness. And even though I don't quite understand what's going on right now, God, I will trust in that goodness and your faithfulness to us because you are the one that sustains. You are the one who knows more than I do. And even though this is hard and I don't quite get it, God, I'm going to trust in you. It's this really beautiful picture because I don't know about you, but I've had many times in my life where I've said, God, I don't get it. Why? Where are you? Why are you letting this continue to happen? And I cry out to God. Sometimes I get a response back uh, that I don't like, like Habakkuk does. Sometimes I get no response at all. And the question is, what do I do then? Do I continue to trust in God, saying, God, even though I don't get it, um, I know that you know more than me. Your ways are better than my ways. You're perfect and I'm broken. And uh, I've seen how you've worked and been faithful uh, in the past. And I'm going to trust you in order to help me to go through this time and into the future. Or are we just going to say, God, forget it all. I don't get it. You're not here. You're not explaining yourself. The, you're not working the ways that I like. Therefore, I'm out. I'm ditching you, and I'm ditching my faith. And that's really the choice before us. Habakkuk makes this beautiful decision to say, God, I don't get it, but um, I get you. I know who you are, and I'm going to continue to trust in you even when it's hard. And I think that's a beautiful picture because this is what happens for all the kind of great biblical heroes that we see. Um, you see all these pictures like Abraham, uh, of Paul, of even Jesus himself saying, God, I, I don't like what's about to happen, yet I'm going to trust you. And when we see that happen, the, the story just ends up being this incredible thing. Um, we see people do uh, amazing things because even though they don't get it or they don't quite understand, they know God is with them and God's going to carry them through. So my hope for myself as I read and study um, Habakkuk is that I might have the same amount of faith as he does. Or even if I'm in a season where I don't understand where God is or what he's doing, I can say, look, even when nothing's going my way, God, I will still trust you because you are the one who gives me the strength to keep going. So that's my encouragement for you and for me today. And I hope, uh, yeah, that guides you into your week. We'll see you next time. Bye.